we go now next to our uh, following speaker. Um, so this is uh, Jose Martins. Um, you know, he is a big fan of beer. Well, not beer, although he has a big beer, as you will see um, uh, on, on the video. He also loves coffee and tea. His pet is a guinea pig named Artemis. And once he sent an app, um, he sent an app update that crashed um, in production every time. Okay, so let's hope that this event does not crash uh, during his talk. Uh, he's bringing a topic at the moment that um, uh, is a very hot topic and that we are living, you know, how we work remote. And for sure, uh, I will be able to take some tips to implement next week. Uh, maybe, you know, our prime minister, Costa, is, you know, is watching this and can get some, tip, uh, some top tips to share with, uh, with our Portuguese um, fellow friends. You know, let's wait a moment and he will join us just right after this. Hey everyone, um, hope you're doing okay. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, remote working. So thank you, first of all, thank you all for coming. Um, but before we jump in, let me talk a little bit about myself. So my name is Jean Martins. I'm currently a product owner at Mindira and I'm also an organizer of Product Tank Porto, which is a local product, uh, local product community and NetPont, which is a tech community going for more than 10 years now. Uh, I uh, was a developer for about six years. The last two and a half years I've been working in product and of which the uh, last maybe a year and a half roughly, I've been working remote first uh, and my team is basically a remote first distributed team. We uh, have people in different offices in different uh, countries even. But let's jump into it. And before I begin, I'm just gonna say, like I'm, try I'm gonna try and cover some things that might help you here, but you might have a lot of questions that I won't go through. So you can just start writing them and uh, in the end, I'll try and make uh, answer them as best as I can during the Q&A. So before we jump into the actual problems and solutions I'm gonna propose to you, uh, I would just wanna quickly go through what I call the uh, four types of remote work. And those are the no remote, when you don't have the remote possibility at all, you just have to go to the office. Remote friendly, when uh, you occasionally get to work from home or somewhere else other than the office. Remote first, which is the situation I'm in, you might have people in different offices, and remote only, which uh, is the situation most tech companies nowadays have been working uh, uh, um, they, uh, thou, uh, they have how they have been working. Sorry about that. Um, but let's jump to the first one. So no remote, a little bit about the pros and cons. The pros, you get to connect with everyone in person. Well, you're in the same office, so therefore the same time zone as well. And it's easier, use, uh, usually easier to communicate because, well, you're speaking to the person next to you, right? So that's how we always communicate the cons is that you're gonna have to commute. In my particular case, I spend three hours to go to the office a day if I, ha if I go to the office, so it's quite a long time. Uh, you're limited to the office conditions. Maybe you have an open space with lots of visual and audio noise and uh, information gets lost. What I mean by this is that if, if when people talk in person, they tend not to write things down. So it happens that you might have Maybe you were in the bathroom while a conversation was happening and you just lost it because nobody wrote it down. Remote friendly, what is it? So it's when you occasionally get to work from uh, another place different than the office, but uh, which allows you to have a better work-life balance. You don't have commute for those days and you still get occasionally uh, get together time in the office with, uh, with your team. The cons is that well, you might feel like a second-class citizen. Uh, what I mean by this is that, well, a conversation might happen in the office on the day that you were working remotely because people, eh, crap, he's at home, but, well, we, we got to talk, uh, have to talk about this now, and, well, we'll update him later. So th these things happen, and meetings can be hard because you might be faced with having a video call with 10 people in one room where, I mean, you don't get a chance to participate at all. And again, important information is usually missed because, again, people tend to not write stuff down. 
Uh, the next one is remote first, where by remote first, it actually means that first remote. So wherever you are, whenever you are, you, uh, information needs to get to you. So the pros is that you get to pick where you work, even the country. You have very short to no commute at all because of the where you want to work. Uh, you might still have the option to go to the office. In my case, for example, I can still go there, just not every day. And you don't miss out on important information because stuff gets written down. That's very important. The cons is that you don't have direct interaction for far away co uh, co-workers. So if you live in a different country, you might have some time get togethers, but it's not as often as you do if you are in the office, right? Um, mixed mix meetings are still an issue. Again, same problem, having people co-located and other people joining in remotely can be tricky. Can be, it's doable, definitely, but it is tricky. And lastly, crafting relationships is harder because, well, you're not there, right? You only see people through a uh, webcam and it's hard to make cre uh, to create relationships and craft those relationships. Lastly, the, we have the remote only. In this case, you pick again wherever you want to work. You don't feel left out because, well, everybody's in the same situation as you are, so you don't feel like you're missing something because you're not in the office. There isn't any office, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, hire from anywhere in the world. That's I, I consider that quite a plus because it means you get to work with a lot of different people with different backgrounds. However, you can still miss people interactions because you get maybe one on twice uh, ha get have a big get together with everyone. You have to deal with time zones and those can be a bitch for uh, those out there who have had problems with this. You know what I'm talking about. And although at the beginning this is a con, the new ways of communicating, especially asynchronously, uh, are a hard challenge at first. It, a, a, a long term, it will actually benefit the way you work and it will really help you, uh, help you manage your work better. But I, I don't want to get too much into it. So moving on to the gist of this uh, talk. Uh, I'm going to go through the problems I usually I face myself uh, myself uh, and uh, I see other people having, especially now that we're forced to work uh, from home, which I'm going to focus on the from home part. Working remotely is different from working from home. So but I'm going to focus on the latter because, well, a lot of people, a lot of us have been faced with that situation uh, quite recently. So the most common problems are uh, problems are overworking or and or procrastination, lack of productivity and even forgetting you had to make lunch. So that happens. Why? Simply because the guy that's usually hungry at lunchtime didn't like grab you and say, hey, let's get, head out lunch. And when you look at the clock, it's already like 3 p.m. This happens. Now, my solutions to this are pretty straightforward. Routine, 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 routine. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by this. Uh, what I'm going to suggest might seem a little bit rigid, but bear with me because I'm not doing it at the moment. I don't have to do all the things I'm going to say about next now, but it did help me tremendously to make, uh, to create a work life separation when I'm working from home. And if you don't do it, it's quite tricky to separate what is work and what is home when you work in the same physical place. So let's start at the beginning then. The final working schedule. You might still have a, a variable uh, work time schedule, but you start working at a specific time, you uh, have a lunch break, and then you stop working at a different time. Think of this as if you were going to the office. You'd still get in at a certain time and get out another another time, right? The fact that you're at home doesn't mean that you have to, that deadline doesn't exist anymore. Give me a second. So define your working schedule get out of bed, have a shower, dress up, have breakfast, not necessarily in that order, whatever fits you, put your shoes together, leave the house. And when I mean leave the house, especially in this time is not like go around and roam somewhere, just leave the house, circle around the block or the building or go and grab uh, bread if you want, come back. When the second you enter your house, you're in work mode. It's like the same thing as you're arriving to the office, only the office is 
in your home. And when you enter, you immediately start working as you would in the office, right? And what's really important here is that while you're working, don't really don't do anything you wouldn't do if you were in the office. That means don't do laundry, don't start cooking, don't start cleaning, don't do any of those things. If you were in the office, you most definitely wouldn't be doing laundry, right? Now, this might seem weird, but again, you want to make clear separation between what is work and what is your daily normal life, right? You're again, in still in the same place. So you get to lunchtime, you do the same thing, put your shoes on, or if you already had them on, leave the house, circle around the building, come back in. Now you're in, lun in your lunch break. Define how much time you want for your lunch break. If you have a fast lunch, don't quickly jump into and get back to work. Like give yourself some time, fill that time with making puzzles, playing video games, um, watching TV shows, whatever. Allow yourself a break. Otherwise you just be prone to overwork again. Now you, after you finish lunch, get out, circle back around the building, get in again and start working. Do the, the same thing for the whole afternoon. And at the end of the day, get out of the house again, come back in and you're done. It would be the same thing as if you're coming home from work, normal day. Now, a couple of more things that really help with this. Uh, it, it, this might suit you one way uh, better than the other. You try it out. So a friend of mine, for example, has his laptop set up so that at six or 6.30, it warns them, warns him that it's going to shut down. Like it's your workday is ending. I'm going to shut down. Go away. You have to remind yourself to stop working. If in the case you're overworking. Uh, and a thing I do because I work, I use my uh, laptop for both personal and work use. I have two accounts. What that means is that on my uh, work account, I only have work related things. And whenever I go, uh, do a lunch break, Sorry, and I want to uh, watch a TV show, for example, during lunch, I switch off to my personal account and there I won't be bothered uh, about anything work related because I don't have anything there. I have to switch accounts at a given time, which when I want to go back to work. So it's as simple as that. It's another thing is uh, uninstalling any work related uh, software you might have on your phone. So email or Slack or whatever chat tool you use. That way you can be on your breaks without having to worry about work because work is just a, like a few steps away in your laptop. If something's urgent, probably someone's gonna call you so it can wait, right? Now, moving on to another subset of problems I, uh, I have faced and I encounter. One of them is back working conditions and constant interruption. So, in the office, you have a workplace that was created specifically for you to work in, right? With the uh, necessary conditions to, for you to do so. At home, not necessarily, right? You might only have your couch. You might never have ever thought of building like a, an office, a small office where you could, could work from. But if you want to work in a sustainable way, at least for me personally, it's really important that you have the necessary equipment and conditions for you to work. So what I, what I mean by this is that you should improve your setup however you can. Be that a chair, be that a table, a desk, a second monitor, a keyboard, etc. My office working conditions are actually better, my home office are actually better than the office ones. So I don't feel like I'm missing something equipment wise, condition wise work while I'm working from home that I would do if I were in the office. A good in internet, especially now that is extremely important. I recently acquired a new access point so that I could, ha could have a five gigahertz connection and the connection is now stable. I'm now doing this because, well, if you're only remote, internet is crucial. Uh, if possible, find a place, uh, a proper place for you to work. So my apartment is not very big, but I did manage to find a place where I can put a desk with everything on it. So I know that while I'm here, I'm working. And when I want to relax, I take the laptop away and I, away I go to the couch. 
So this is again a separation. If I'm sitting here, here I'm working. If I'm not, I'm probably not working. Uh, now you might say, well, my I live in a very very small apartment where I don't have space to put a desk on. While that is a problem, there are other ways you can uh, circle around this. So let's say let's say you only have your couch. You will probably find uh, a a, a position in your couch where you normally never sit in that's still comfortable but you would never sit in that way like it might be a different seat so what you can do is while you're working sit in that different seat and you while you're there you're working and while you're not working you sit on the, uh, your normal seat so again it's uh, uh, about creating a separation between what is work and what isn't work? Remember, you're still within your home, so barriers, physical barriers, might not exist. You have to create mental ones. And um, again, I must say that all I'm saying is not about, it's not supposed to be rigid. I, these are things that you should try out and hopefully they'll help. Again, I started a while with going out of the home, circling back in. It, it seemed a little weird for me at first, but it really helped me create those barriers. And now I don't have to do that. I know that when I'm sitting here, I'm working and I can control my working schedule without having to leave the house. So it gets better. You don't always have to do that. But it's basically creating a routine where you feel comfortable with. Another problem I see is the lack of proper tools. And... Uh, this is mostly company-wise, I'd say. So let's say you, you would occasionally in the past do video calls and maybe you sort of use Skype or whatever. It worked for the purpose of that specific meeting, but now it's re it really isn't working anymore because you don't just have one person remote, you have everybody remote. What I, I can't stress this any better than say upgrade the, to better tools. They're worth every cent. There's a Portuguese expression that says Em casa de ferreiro, espeto de pau. In English, the equivalent is the shoemaker's son always goes barefoot. So we get paid quite a lot of money to produce software. It's, it doesn't make any sense that we don't pay for the software that allow us to do our work. So the only thing I'm, I'm going to say about that, if you like a tool, if, if you need a tool to make your work easier and the tool is out there but it's paid, pay for it. Now, the, uh, the other thing I'm going to talk about is the uh, lack of communication or lack of response. So, a lack of communication happens... Uh, sorry, a lack of, uh, lack of communication is, while remote is bad. If you're not hearing from someone, it doesn't mean everything's all right. It doesn't. It means that people aren't communicating. That's all it means. You probably have problems as you had previously while you're in the office, but now you just don't know about it because nobody said them. So, a lot of communication happens when in the office, of which we don't think about, but it's there. You need to over communicate while remote because you tend to communicate way less than you would do in the office. I mean, while in the office, somebody you can see somebody getting up because they're, they're pissed off at something or they are talking to someone else and you can grab their uh, they grab your attention while you're sitting in your house. Well, you don't know. Right. So you need to message people, video chat with people communicate like if you're thinking hey they surely got it from that conversation that happened in slack they didn't nine out of ten they didn't so think about it like this at worst case scenario if we repeat if you're saying writing something at the worst case scenario it's redundant at the best case scenario it's actually useful information for the other person right so over communicate through text through video whatever just over communicate Another thing that helps is letting people know when you're in or out. So if I, I let my team know when I'm out for lunch, they know that if I don't reply right away, it's because I'm out of lunch, right? It's my lunch break. So if it's not urgent, they'll just wait and they don't, well, they won't get stressed about it. And another thing to this is while being remote, sorry, 
uh, while being remote, you start learning how to communicate asynchronously. It's kind of odd compared to uh, in-person communication because you're just talking to the person next to you. So I talk and I wait for the other person to talk back to me. This is synchronous. Asynchronous means basically that I write something to someone and I'm not waiting there for to get back a response. Like whenever that person can and has time for it, they will get back to me. And working like this allows you to work on many different things at the same time and not having to sit and wait on somebody. Of course, sometimes you need to get synchronous. And by all, by all means, I'm not saying stop doing video calls. Don't. That's not the, the, what I'm saying. Do them while they make sense. But for things that are not immediate and they are not pressing, you can probably get away with a message that someone else will reply to you in like six hours and that's completely fine, right? Another thing that helps is always use public channels whenever possible. If it's public, other people will uh, look into it. Think of it like this. If you were in the office and you're uh, chatting with, to the people, uh, person next to you, there's a chance that someone else might listen into the conversation and might think, hey, I have something to add. If you have personal convers individual conversations within your chat tool, then you don't have that, the, that other person is never able to think like, maybe I have something to add. But you have this, if, you're, if you have the conversation in a public channel, that person can now add in more information. And that's, that's usually better. Like n most of the things we talk about are not personal things. So no need to have them private. And um, communicate clearly. I'm sorry, I forgot to uh, pass the next slide. Communicate clearly is uh, you're not writing a book, nor you're writing poetry when you're writing message to your colleagues using a chat tool. So don't get overcomplicated in your communication. Just say things clearly. I'm going to read about from hundreds to thousands of messages a day. And if I have to read through your message three times to understand what you mean, well, I'm going to have a hard trouble. And I'm going to start ignoring you because I have to make the time to comprehend your messages. So communicate clearly. And that leaves, uh, leads me to the next one, which, which is use emojis. So there's one thing in the internet called Poe's Law, which basically states that if you write something, for example, that's sarcastic, just in text, you have a, 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 one person can interpret it in a uh, sarcastic way and the other person might take you seriously. Why? because it can be interpreted in both ways. When you're communicating through text, you don't, have mo you don't have emotion on it, right? You don't have expression. When you're talking to someone who's being sar sarcastic in front of you, you can, see, you can read their face, their expression. If they're like, if they have a quirk, they're, they're slightly smiling. But when you're reading text, you don't have that. So how do you add that 50% you're missing with text? Emojis. So if I were to write a sarcastic message, but after, after it, I put a troll emoji, then you clearly know I'm being sarcastic, right? And the same thing happens when you're being, uh, when you're pissed, when you're happy, when you're angry, whatever it is. If you put the emoji next to it, it really adds more emotional value to the message you're writing and helps other people that know you how they can imagine how you would be saying it because they know how you're feeling. Now to the last bit that I want to talk about, it's loneliness and missing out. Uh, this happens quite a lot, and especially now because, well, we can't go all, out at all. We can hang out, have a beer, like an actual physical beer. But there are ver various ways where you can uh, circle around this. I'm going to talk about some. One of them is virtual hangouts and one-on-one -on -one time. By virtual hangouts, I can give an example. Uh, the team I'm in at the moment, we always have a virtual hangout meeting, which is always on, and you can join in at any time. So what we do is, uh, whenever someone wants to do a break, they uh, just say on the channel, like, I'm gonna do a break, like having a snack or even having lunch, and whoever wants to join in, they do. They just join in and you talk hopefully about other things other than work, right? Uh, like you would if you were going out for lunch uh, with your teammates. Talk about soccer, talk about the weather, the news, whatever. 
you can still do this in one-on-one -on -one time because uh, it not, you don't ha always have to be in a room full of people. You can have a conversation as you would, like think again back as if you were in the office. You go and grab a, um, a glass of water, there's someone there and you, you, you do what? Water cooler conversation, right? So, but this is virtual water cooler conversation. Another very important thing while you're doing this is turn your webcam on. We get it. You, your, your house might not be in order. I don't, you can probably see there's a vacuum cleaner up there. My team actually said they wanted to buy me another one. I don't know why that works perfectly fine, but maybe they just want to see a different one there. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I cut my own hair two weeks ago. It looks uh, um, better if I stand further away from the webcam, but come on, I'm at home. These are my conditions. I have nothing to hide. Like we all have what we have. So like, another thing is for people who have kids, like don't be like, don't be um, embarrassed that your kids are playing around. I mean, it's a real challenge. I don't have kids, but for people who have, now has been a, quite a challenge to try and work while having them in the house. So the last thing you should be is embarrassed about them. Like, it's fine. Maybe we, we can even interact with them and say, hi. I mean, what's wrong with it? It's not all about work. And the last thing I'll say here is the forced conversations, which might seem a little bit odd, but I'll, I'll explain what it is. So when you're in the office, again, you're going to the bathroom and you casually go by someone. You have a small conversation there. But while you're at home, it's very easy for you to spend the whole day without talking to anybody, right? Because, well, you don't have any meetings and if you don't force it, and what I mean by forcing it is picking someone on your list and say, let me have a chat with this guy. Let me casually talk about something other than work. It's not going to happen. So the, the, the force word there is because you actually have to do it yourself. It doesn't just naturally happen because you, do, you lack the environment for it. So you have to make it happen. And that's it for my talk. Uh, I'm going to hopefully try and answer a few Q&As. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be um, leaving my, uh, the slides available later. I'll share them through my social networks. And I'll probably be doing a blog post where I'll go into more detail about all the things I mentioned here and hopefully answer the questions you guys asked there as well. So I'm going to switch this to just my face and uh, I'm going to look at the Q&A now. So, all right. First one is, how do you let everyone know you're in and out? Change your status in an app? Do you notify everyone? Does everyone, sorry, does everyone does, do the same? Is there a specific channel for that? Uh, it can be through the, uh, uh, the, the app status if you want. Uh, you can let everybody know if you have like a, a regular work schedule, like you go out to lunch at say 12.30, come back at two, just say that and people kind of start getting used to it. So that's fine. Or you can just say before you leave, it's variable. Like I'm heading out to lunch, like put it an, an emoji. Uh, my team does that. And when you're back in, say I'm back in. In the morning, say, hi, morning, everyone. I'm starting, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, starting work. Uh, the same thing at the end of the day. All right, so the next one from Tiago Pereira is another problem about remote is the security concerns, especially for non-IT companies. Okay, so I think, I, 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 I don't know if I can add much here, but for any company, being IT or not, security should be a concern. Like if you don't have IT people, you should. <laughs> Uh, there are a lot of tools there. And uh, yes, of course, you should be concerned about what to use and uh, be mindful if you should be using it and how you should be using it. But I'd say in, when in doubt, always refer to the tech department within your company. I mean, if you don't have one, you probably should. Um, so the next one from Juliano. <laughs> Hi, Juliano. I saw the comment about my beard. I hope it makes you happy. <laughs> 
Why do you think about having uh, virtual coffee breaks with your teammates? Uh, or for one hour, everyone joins video conferencing app and work together. So for me, uh, I, I honestly haven't done it much because I started working remotely by myself at first. So it was very weird to ask people to just hang out and chat when everybody was in the office. So you don't have a lot of empathy there. But what I uh, what we started actually doing in my team before this whole thing started, like uh, maybe two months ago, is that, for example, at stand-up, we have 15 minutes for the normal stand-up. And uh, afterwards, the next 15 to 30 minutes, we just do water cooler conversation. We talk about TV shows, books, video games, whatever. It's the team talking about other things other than work. Uh, I know, my dear, we usually ha did uh, something called Beer Friday, where you would hang out in after, uh, Friday after work and just have a beer and be there. Uh, now they are doing a virtual Beer Friday, where they're actually doing a quiz. Uh, I think it's a quiz. I may be mistaken there, but... Um, all virtual. So you have one person that's leading the quiz and other people, whoever wants to join in, joins in. So it's extremely useful and I do recommend it. Another one from Antonio. What tools do you recommend for co remote communication? Slack, Teams, Discord. I think Discord is usually underrated for business communications. Personally, for communication, for chat, I use Slack. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. It does its job. For video, I hugely recommend Zoom. I, I, I'm quite aware of the whole thing going on around Zoom, but I really haven't used any better tool so far. But anyway, some tools are better than others and it depends on your personal tastes and maybe what the company paid for. As long as it gets the job done, that's the main thing, right? If you, you, you could even be using Skype for messaging. If it works, use it. Like I, I have a personal preference, but it at the, at the end of the day it has to work. All right, so next question. For those who have kids around and they don't fully understand the situation, do you have any suggestions for the distractions they cause? Okay, so I'm going to give my uh, uh, attempt at the best answer because I don't have kids, so I, I can only imagine the challenges. But what I've seen people from my team doing that have kids is, well, first of all, being um, setting the proper expe expectations. If you have a kid and you have to work and you have nobody else to take care of, it, uh, uh, of him or her, they put in 50% of work time. They're gonna work uh, several hours across the day, maybe four, maybe five hours, and they won't be, be able to do it in a sequence, uh, but they, that's the best they'll be able to do. And I think this is really important. It man manages expectations both for the person that's working because, well, they, if you commit to eight hours, when you have a kid, well, you know you're not going to do eight hours. But if you commit to four or five, you can manage it. Like, you can still be useful, be there, while uh, taking care of, uh, for your kid. However, not rocket science. Kids are different. Like, I, I, I'm not an expert there. But I, I find, I think, uh, from my teammates that this has been working for them. Uh, another one from Teofilo. Hi, Teofilo. What will uh, you do if people don't turn on the camera for meetings? Do you have any tips? So what I do is I ask, uh, why, why don't you have, you have your camera on? Is it like, uh, are you um, concerned about the way you look? Is, so I, I, I found out that most, when I ask this, most people say, I haven't really thought of it. Because people usually work in the office and they like, you see other people's faces, right? But if you're at home, you didn't even recall, remember, like, I should have switched my camera on. So that's one of the things. The second is people are afraid, like, oh, my hair is all messy and um, I don't... Well, I do recommend you that you're fully dressed when you're talking to your teammates. Again, you're at home. Um, like we say in Portuguese, à vontade, mas não à vontadinha. Uh, you're at home, but still, like, you need to be dressed, right? You're working. So there's, a, like, a, a limit. But... Just asking them. It might uh, be that the person doesn't really want to turn on the camera, and I guess that's fine. It's their uh, their choice. But just asking them, like you don't know the reason until you ask them, right? 
Uh, the last one I have here from Paulo. Uh, do you think Mindero will change their idea about remote work? Like when we go back to normal, if some worker wants to be go remote by one month, it will be a problem. Well, I can give my opinion here. Uh, I think this is very different from team to team within Mindera. Uh, in 2018, I worked a whole month from Sweden. Uh, and the reason I could do that is because my team works in a remote first way. So I could work a whole month from uh, the city I live in without going to the office if I wanted to. Uh, or from other country, I, I, that I've done that within my team, and I think that's doable within Mindera. I think it really depends on the team you work. You do need to make sure of one thing: if your team doesn't work in a remote first way, if you want to try and go out, you're gonna have uh, trouble. So the best thing to do is usually start if uh, experiencing like when you work remotely encourage your team to be more remote first. For example, uh, one example is if we're like seven people, I think on my team, there is remote on any call. Everyone is on their own laptop. Nobody is on a meeting room because we ensure that everybody is on the same situation. I am seeing what you're seeing. I have the same capabilities as you have. So I think that's very, very important to have. But definitely something that I, I can see happening in my era because it happened in my team. Now, I don't say I don't see any other questions. So again, I'll be sharing the um, the slides later and hopefully do a blog post uh, with answers to the questions you guys raise here, and also share a bunch of links because there are what like companies who only work remotely and that have been writing the book on how to work remotely for years now. Uh, Buffer, uh, GitLab more recently, Zapier, and I could spend all afternoon naming them. So uh, to make it more useful, I'm going to share them well with my blog post and also put them in slides so it's helpful for you. Um, before I go, and uh, just one last question. Do you think less people overall will go back to the offices? Part of me wants to think yes, for, the, for, for a very specific reason. A lot of companies were afraid to let uh, workers work remotely because they were afraid like it's lack of control. It's not necessarily bad. It's like you don't know what will happen. It, uh, people might, might not work at all. So I think if you want to start working remotely, it takes quite a a whole lot of responsibility upon yourself. And you need to accept that. You need to be aware of that. Uh, it, remote working is not for everyone. I found it's not for everyone and it has its own challenges. So if uh, definitely I think people will be more willing to allow other people to work remote because, well, we have been doing that forcibly for the past one and a half months and one way or another, it's working. So why shouldn't it work after the, this whole crisis ends? All right, that's it. Uh, I hope you all are having a great Saturday. It's more or less sunny here. Um, and thank you all for tuning in. Enjoy and have a great day. Bye.